morning, guys. Today we're going to be working with our zebras. If you remember last class, we learned how to draw the zebra. We trace it with a black Sharpie or dry erase marker, and we fill out the stripes or the dots. So what are we going to do today? We're going to continue with this project, and I'm going to show you some samples because you're going to learn how to use your watercolors in order to color your zebra and a beautiful background for it. So you can see over here in my samples that every zebra is going to be different, but beautiful in their own way. You can choose what colors you want to add. You can include a background. Of course, are we going to draw a background for the zebra for the movie theaters? No, right? So where can we find zebras? In the nature, very good. In the savannas, in Africa, in the zoo. So we're gonna make sure that if we're gonna add a background for our zebra, it's gonna be a natural nature. It's with the sun, with grass, with the sky, okay? You can see all the different colors that you can apply and they're all gonna look beautiful and amazing. You are the artist, you can choose how you want your project to look at the end, how you want your zebra, the colors that you want to apply, it's going to be up to you. So what are we going to do next? I'm going to share my document camera and you're going to be able to see how to use the different supplies, the watercolors, the water, your brush to do the project. So you're going to, after my instructions or my demonstration, you're going to get all the supplies that you need from your teacher. We're going to be using watercolors, like these ones that I have. We're going to get a cup with a little bit of water and my brush that is going to be inside of my watercolor palette, okay? And we're going to get some paper towel to have next to us to dry, to clean the brush, or to rinse any water. So please be very careful with the water. Go ahead and put your zebra in front of you and start thinking what colors you want to apply, okay? Remember, there's no right or wrong. You are the artist and you can choose how to do it. So I started already here applying some purple. I think I'm going to go ahead and do some yellow. So Maura Sandra, how do I know that I'm using the right amount of water? So there are two ways to know, okay? My watercolors are dry. If I touch them with my fingers, they're not going to paint. They're called watercolors because they need water to work. So if I don't put water, they're not going to work. But if I put too much water, they're going to come out too light and maybe they're going to damage my paper because the amount of water that I'm using. So it should be effortless. You should be able to slide your brush without any problem. If I start seeing the strikes of my brush and it's not going fluently or smoothly, it means that I need more water. So I dip my brush again in the water for a little bit and add more water to the color that I'm using. Mara Sandra, can I blend colors? Can I blend purple and yellow? Of course you can, but you're not going to mix them here. You're going to blend them in the paper and I'm going to show you how. Okay? So I'm adding here some yellow. You see that every time that I need that the brush gets dry and the paint gets dry, I go in and I get some more water, okay? If my paint is coming too light and I can barely see it and my paper is starting to get like dusty, it means that I put too much water, okay? There's no an exact number, an exact amount of water, okay? You just have to test it and find the correct amount that works for you. But you are seeing that what I'm doing is effortless and it goes quickly and expands through the paper, okay? So if I want to mix colors or if I want to change colors, I have to rinse my brush thoroughly, okay? And then check that it doesn't have any more yellow and start with a different color. So I'm going to do a little bit of blending so you can see it right now. I'm going to start by applying some purple, okay? So I put water in the purple, okay? And I'm going to start applying it over here on the bottom, and then I'm going to blend it with some orange. So I do my purple. Please do not use the brush roughly. 
do not poke with it because you're gonna damage, okay? You have to go gently and smooth, slide it side to side, okay? So when my paint or my brush are getting dry, I'm getting a little bit more of water to blend my color, to make it lighter, okay? That's option number one. I can blend my colors to a lighter color. And if I want to blend it with another color, I just rinse my brush again. Remember, we're switching colors, so we need to rinse our brush first. I put water in my new color, or the second color that I'm going to be using for my blending. And I'm going to start on the opposite side. So I'm going to go and add some orange over here. And I'm going to blend it with a purple. What it means is I'm going to go over a little bit the orange on top of the paper, the purple, to make them blend. As they blend, they're going to create a mix between them. And then I just can use a little bit of water to finish the blending. Okay. I want to rinse my brush. And just with a little bit of water, I'm going to blend well the connection of purple and orange. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here they are. This is the blending between colors. You can see how the colors switch in the middle and do the blending from one color to the other one, okay? So remember, you are the artist. You can choose how you want to blend the colors, what mixes you want to have. That's going to be up to you. And what colors are you adding? These zebras are kind of magical, okay? You are going to be the one choosing what colors are you using. We already have the black stripes or the black dots. So now have fun adding a lot of bright colors. Maria Sandra, can I use brown and black? I will stay away from them, okay? Why? Because we already have a lot of black from the Sharpie. So I think it's time to add beautiful bright colors. Again, I'm going to show you quickly some samples that are ready so you can see how colorful and nicely they are. You can also see backgrounds ready. You have time today to finish everything, the background, the zebra, and let it dry. And then you can take it home, okay? Um, the watercolor paints dry really quickly. You just need to put it on the side of your desk and let it dry for a few minutes before putting it in, in your background. Just check with your hand that everything is dry with, before putting it away. So I hope you like the project. I'm going to ask you guys that please, when you are over, go ahead and make sure to rinse or wash thoroughly your brush with the water, okay? Then dry it with your paper towel and put it away inside of your watercolor padlet, okay? Watercolor padlet, I need to be returned to me. Unless you have your own one, you can keep having it with your supplies, okay? Cup some water going to the garbage. By the way, if during your process your water gets really, really dark and brownish, you can toss it away in the garbage or in a safe place that your teacher tells you, and we'll have a jar with fresh water to replace. Okay? I hope you like the project. Enjoy. I'm looking forward to see the beautiful seabrass that you're going to be having ready for today. Bye.